Number 50 in the same book. Number 50. We got some good alto in the front of the room. I'm going
guys that help us in the choir, y'all come on up. And in the songs that play, Page 38 in the Songs of Faith. Redeemed. You, you base.
sheltered in the arms of God. I told Andy the other day, um, I think it was the night before Daddy went back in the hospital before he passed away, and I'd always hug him and say, but I love you, but that one night he grabbed me again, and he said, proud of you, and you know, I dwelled on that, I still dwell on that, what was he talking about, what was he proud of, you know, what, what, but I told Andy, I said, if I can just get to heaven, and God hold me up like that and say, proud of you, and that's been on my heart all week. You know, just be proud of me. I want God to be proud of me, just like I wanted my daddy to be proud of me. But listen to the words of this song, Sheltered in the Arms of God.
Amen. We certainly appreciate that and all that wonderful singing. It's good to see each and every one in the house of the Lord. And we hope that you came to worship the Lord. You know, if we're not careful, we get in such a routine in life, we forget. But he said to keep the Sabbath day and to keep it holy. See, we didn't come to serve him this morning. We came to worship him. We come to give thanks for that we have in our hearts and our lives. And somebody else may be able to get it. And that's why we're here today. I hope you know that the Lord loves you. And he wants you to let him help you in your life. But you've got to open up your heart. You've got to let him. And if you'll do that, I promise you, he will. I promise you, you got to do his part if you will do yours. Good to see everybody. Let us stand for a moment, turn around, just look at somebody if you don't want to shake their hand and tell them you're glad they're here. everybody making everybody welcome certain you're all welcome in the house of the lord my friend i want you to know that you have your bibles turn with us we'll be reading out of the book of acts the 26th chapter of the book of acts and uh, i'd like to try to encourage more people to come to the choir i know that uh you know sometimes we hold back and uh but it, you, you don't have to be a member to come and sing in this choir. If you're here and you want to sing, uh, I want you to know you're welcome to come to the choir. And we want you to do that. And let me encourage you to do that. Lord, I bless you. Uh, I know it makes Stan feel a lot better. Um, you know, I don't believe you ought to have to beg Christians to do something. I don't. I'm going to encourage you. I love you. But I'm not going to beg you. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to say I wish you would. I hope you do, but that's it. I mean, and when the Lord gets a hold of you, my friend, you'll be wishing you had. Because if he's give you a voice to sing, you need to be up here singing for the glory of God. You really do. You really do. And I, uh, we know Rosetta, Rosetta. I always have a problem with your name. I hate that, but we certainly pray for you you lost her her mother's not lost a good friend of mine told me one time he said well i said i'm sorry you lost he said i haven't lost them you haven't lost her she went to heaven and i tell you she had a wonderful testimony it won't be long i tell you what folks this time's passed it won't be long we'll all be there if you're saved if you're not saved i hope you wake up to the fact you need to get saved in the 26th chapter a book of acts i want to skip all the way down to the 27th verse and it said king agrippa believest thou the prophets i know that thou believest then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. And Paul said, I would to God that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day, which both almost and altogether, such as I am, 
accept these bonds. Heavenly Father, we ask for your blessings on your word. I ask for anointing of our calling and not another. I pray, Lord, that you'll send the word. It might touch the hearts of these good people. Lord, they got up this morning and they've come this way. We thank you for that. We felt in our heart and Sunday too and the singing. Now we ask you take this stammering tongue and you use it for all your glory. I know that I'm the least of all your men, but I pray, Father, send the message that these good people need to hear in their heart. They be one lost and you bid them to come. I pray the Spirit of God will be so strong they'll be willing to come and cry out, what must I do to be saved? And Lord, if any of your children have drifted away, I pray this is the morning in their life that they'll come to themselves and come back home. In Christ's name we pray, amen. And now you pray for us. We know that you that read your Bible, as you may be familiar with this scripture and all. Uh, but I want to go back for just a little bit, uh, a few chapters here, and briefly bring you up to what had happened in the life. And you know, my friends, a lot of times I believe that the old devil's good at what he does. And when I, I remember speaking, a good friend of mine got, he got right and got back in church. And he came by the house and he says, uh, you know, I'm having more problems than now before or when I was out in the world. It just seems like it's, I'm just receiving so much. I said, well, amen. I'm proud of that. And he looked at me. He said, that ain't what I was wanting to hear, preacher. I said, well, that means the devil don't like what's going on in your life now. And he wants you to go back to where you used to be. And, uh, and so many times, I believe us as Christians need to realize it's a joy to be persecuted and criticized. See, if you're not doing nothing for the Lord, you're not going to be criticized. I promise you, the devil likes that. Do you be sitting around? They won't nobody say, but you start trying to invite somebody to church. Do you try to start witness to somebody and tell them what the Lord done for you in your life and how he'll do the same for them if he let them, my friend? I'm telling you, you're going to receive some criticism. And then the Bible teaches us we don't need to look at it as a bless them. We need to be thankful that that's happening and give the Lord credit. Now we need to ask for help. Uh, my friends, we all want to be strengthened. Don't let the devil beat you down too much. Uh, he's good at what he does. I want to show you what happened to Paul, my friend, uh, and it was over a little time frame. You know, a lot of times we want God to fix something and we want him to fix it now. I prayed for it and he didn't answer. But my friends, just hold on and keep on praying and living right and it's going to come. He's going to help you, I promise you. Uh, and uh, So what happened to Paul, my friends? Uh, and he's witnessing and Lord saving and a bunch of the uh, Christians, if you'll have it, the holy ones, the fire, uh, back then it's Sadducees and Pharisees begin to criticize him uh, and blaming him for all the fault and accusing him of things that wasn't true. And they brought him up to uh, my friends, to Felix, to be, uh, if you have to put him in jail and and to uh, they was really wanting him kill him and they was even a bad like I said there's so much in this but there was even a bunch of them got together about 40 of them this is you think you've been persecuted my friends uh, you think about this right here 40 men have got together uh, and they said we'll not eat and we'll not drink until Paul's dead I mean, my friends, that's pretty bad. Isn't it? Now, I know a lot of people don't like me in this life, but I've not had nobody threaten to kill me and take my life. But yet, I'm thankful for that, and we need to count. Kind of and let me tell you, church, I'm telling you, I know we're living in this Saturday evening time, but we need to count our blessings that we're able to come and assemble in the church. You need to be telling your children, your children ought to know it's not, are we going to church this? morning. It ought to be my friends. Amen. I'm looking forward to going to church. There ought not be no question about it, my friends. Uh, and realize that this is an opportunity because the Bible said not coming when no man were. We ought to, we've seen a glimpse of it during the COVID where our country tried to close down the churches, my friends, and the assembly. Now wake up. It's a privilege that we are able to assemble today. Uh, 
And as soon as they get their hands on that, they won't give up, my friends. So I want you to realize the Lord wants us to help people and to realize the joy to come assembly because there's coming a day where we will have to, you mark it down, you might not think this, will, and I don't know a whole lot, but I'm telling you the gospel truth, will come a time where we'll have to be in our houses and meet in secret. Let's count it a joy to come to the house of the Lord. Amen. Paul was criticized for these 40 men that they was going to kill him. Now Paul didn't just say, and you and I need to be wisdom in our life. I'm not going to just try to provoke somebody to try to get me and, and stir up some, but I'm going to stand on the word of God. I'm going to preach you the gospel because Jesus saves today. I, I'm telling you, my friends, if nothing else you get, I, you want to know that my Lord saves. I like that song. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. I, and he'll save you. He'll help you in your life. But you got to let them. Forty of these men got together and they said that we'll not eat and we'll not drink until he's dead. And they made a plan to get him. But my friends, listen, Paul had still some friends. And my friends and somebody had heard. His sister had heard and sucked his nephew. And they went over there and told him, Paul, I've heard this. They're going to try. He says, well, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go over here and you see Felix and you tell him what they said they was going to do. And you don't tell nobody else. Read it, my friends. And they went over there and told him. And listen, God's always, I'm not going to die until the Lord calls me and you're not either. You need to wake up to the fact and quit dwelling on dying. Now, how about dwelling on living? Uh, somebody says, I want to die for my Lord. My Lord don't need you to die for him. He's done died. He paid the price. He needs for you and I to live for him and made an example and help somebody in their life. And Paul sent him over there. And listen, he had some, I'm telling you, God will always make a way for you and I. If you'll let him, he'll help us in our time of need. Uh, and they sent 200 soldiers over there and two men, 200 men of spears, 70 on horseback to get little old Paul. Amen. I'm telling you how God shows up in the time. Paul says, they don't know why they love me, but here, there are 470 men and they're going to escort me where these people can't kill me. And they did that. You don't read nothing else about those 40 men. I, I promise you they eat and they drink and they got over it. I, but say the Lord spared Paul because he had a work for him to do. And I'm telling you when I preach my last message, I say my last prayer. I help that last one in my life. I'm supposed to help. The Lord's going to call me home. Whether I be young or whether I'm old. And y'all think I'm old, don't you? Uh, my friends, listen. He'll call me home. And he's going to do the same for you. So quit worrying about that and start thinking about what a privilege and how good it is to be alive and to be a help somebody and do some good in your life. Amen. Paul got over there and he didn't understand it. But see, God told him that he was going to be brought for, for before King Agrippa and he was going to be able to help him. And the Lord's got a plan for you and let him do his work. Amen. Quit fighting your battles and give it to the Lord. Now, I'm not, oh, glory. That went over good. I mean, you, you keep on and you keep on and you're wondering why it don't get no better and you won't give it to the Lord. You, you keep on. I promise you, if you'll surrender and give it, it, give it to the Lord, he'll fight your battles. He'll help you. Now, my friend, Paul was in jail for two years. It took a while. All right? It may take a while, but hold on. God's got a plan. And I want you to know, if you'll do that, I promise you, if you'll come, uh, and there's somebody, maybe this morning, we've all got battles, uh, and we are listening, church, uh, there's boys and girls that need to be saved around the Yellow Creek more. Uh, there's men and women, I believe, that need to be saved uh, with my friends. And we need to always be praying for one another, encouraging one another. It's easy to put somebody down. Let's pick somebody up. Let's brag on somebody today. Let's tell them how much we appreciate them in your family. If you haven't told your children lately that you love them, well, they know I love them. Well, tell them you love them. 
Let them hear it. Put those big old arms around them and just squeeze them especially. Dads, I want to charge you. When it's time to say blessings, you take charge. And, you, and I love my little kid, when my kids and my grandkids say the blessing. Yeah, I, I know it. It makes us feel good when they know that prayer. But I want you to say a blessing. I want you to let them know how thankful you are for them to be around your table. I want you to let them know how thankful you are for the food. Listen, I know we're blessed in many ways, but it's a blessing to have food on your table. Amen. And to be appreciating the good things in the life. We don't know how it'll be tomorrow or next week, but my Lord does. But let's, let's be thankful. I charge you, men, say the blessing. And don't just go through the pretense. I mean it from the bottom of your heart. Dig in there and find that and let the Lord, let your children hear your prayer and, and know how thankful you are, how good God's been to you in your life. And uh, here Paul was over there uh, and my friends and God delivered him out of that. And now he's over here in Texas and all. He's wanting him there and he witnesses to him. If you have, he preaches the gospel and, and he said, well, I, I tell you, Paul, you come back at a little bit more convenient time. Uh, now, people, listen. My friend, the Lord don't say yesterday. He saves today. Somebody says he saves tomorrow. No, he saves today. He's the same today, tomorrow, my friend. We, we're not careful and the devil will want you to wait and get saved. Oh, I'm going to wait and get saved tomorrow. No, he saves today. Today is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow, not yesterday, but the day that you're in. And he wants you to wait, realize heaven's going to call your name. He's going to call you and let you know that he wants you to be a part of the family of God. You said, I don't know about that. Well, sit tight because I'm telling you, uh, when we preach Jesus Christ and Him crucified, resurrected at the right hand of the Father, making intercessions, sent the Holy Ghost down here, the NC, there's a drawing power to this. Uh, and when He's around, I can feel Him. Uh, my friends, listen, when the wind blows on me, I know it. Huh? And when the Spirit of God blows on me, I know it. And you ought to, too. There's a drawing power to it. Oh, church, we need to be praying for the drawing power of God to stir in the heart of everybody. Oh, I'll tell you, the singers sing their heart out. The little preacher tries to preach his heart out. And then the Lord asks you to do something. And if you're not careful, you sit and you quench the Spirit of God. And you got the key that's the one maybe beside you, behind you, in front of you. He's asking somebody to go first. Or, or maybe he wants you to put your arm around him. Just tell him you love him. The Spirit of God will lead you. I promise you, do your part. And see what the Lord does around Yellow Creek. I'm telling you, my friend, there's power in the Lord. There ain't no power in me. I, I want you to know I'm a fellow creature. I'm just a sinner saved by grace. I'm not preaching my old glory. I'm glad I'm not even trying to preach my way to myself to heaven. I'm going to heaven because I was saved as a 15-year-old boy. And my friend, he came down and he applied the blood to my heart. He sealed it in glory. And it's never going to be open until the day when I draw my last breath. And then he's going to take that and take me to glory, my friends. I, I don't want you to get wrapped up about the crowns and what you're going to have. I just want to get there. I, I really do, my friends. I'm not going to get wrapped up in that stuff. And I want you to get there. Amen. He got and was able to get in front of King Agrippa. And King Agrippa gave him permission to speak. And I'm so thankful Paul let him know who he was. He says, I was a Pharisee, but taught the religion, raised up under gamma. I kept it to a T. If there's anybody that raised up, know me, could tell you. I've even pursued and persecuted these so called Christians. Let me tell you, your experience and your testimony when the Lord saved you is the greatest thing that you could tell somebody. 
You say, I can quote Genesis to Revelation. Well, bless your heart. I'm proud that God give you a gift. But that's not as important to tell your testimony. I mean, tell when the Lord touched your heart, let you know that you was lost, you came somewhere, and you cried out to be saved. And when it happened, you know it. Didn't nobody tell you about it? If you had somebody tell you when it happened, I want you to check up. My, my friend, listen. I'm telling you, you ought to know when it happened. I've heard many testimonies, and I'm glad you give them, that they talk about, as soon as I stepped out, the Lord saved me. And that's how great he is, my friend. He can save you in your seat. Did you know that? I, my, my friends, listen. I, you got to do what he asks you to do, and when he does, he'll do the rest. I promise you. I, and my friends, I know Paul didn't dwell on that. He, he said, but that don't count. Let me tell you, old King of Grip, when I was on my way to Damascus. So I'm telling you there was some people prayed the spirit of God and light shined and all of a sudden I realized my friend I was lost I fell to my knees I, I'm telling you don't you remember when the Lord touched your heart somebody said my children are crying I, I'll say amen we need to pray for our children I, I want conviction to fall I don't want to scare them to listen but it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of God I, it will be afraid. It was for me and it will be for them. But just keep on praying, church. Because when it all said and done, that's what you want. For them to know the difference. You got to realize you're lost before you'll ever be saved. Almost is lost. There is no Christians going to be in heaven. Almost. They're not going to make it. Almost is lost. There is no in between. You either saved or you're lost. Paul began to tell him what happened to him on the road to Damascus. Wasn't it a great day when the Lord saved you? I mean, my friends, what the Lord done for Paul, he done for me. And if you be honest, he done for you. Well, no, preacher, I don't know. Yeah, but you need to go back and remember, my friends. Uh, he said, well, I don't remember no lie. Well, there had to be the lie of the Lord Jesus Christ that you be able to be drawn to him. That got your attention. Did you realize that there's something in your life that you needed? See, our children are saved, and my friends, and they have that lie. But it will go out. It, it will need to have to have the oil, the Spirit of God put back in it. And the Lord Lord can only do that. You and I can't do that. I, and my friends, when that light goes out, it is scary. It is dark. But my Lord's going to save them. If you keep them in the house of God where the gospel is being preached and not taught I, and keep them under the convicting power where people love them and care for them. I, and my friends, and when the Spirit of God begins to move in such a way, they'll know what to do. That's why you and I need to use this altar. They'll know where to go. And I know he can save them right there. But wasn't it wonderful when they're willing to step out and the convicting power is so great, they don't care who's around. They don't care. My friends, they just want to come and be saved. Amen. And God does a miracle in their lives. Paul told King Agrippa about that. He said, oh, I'm telling you, I haven't had nothing like this happen before. I was a grown man. I'm afraid there was a lot of grown people that said, and what happened, you got deceived. I'm just being telling you the gospel truth. And there's somebody watching this video. If you've not felt the spirit of God, you don't know when the Lord came into your heart, you need to check up. I'm telling you, a lot of people have been told they were saved. I can't tell you you're saved, my friends. Only you know it. Moms and dads, you can't tell their children they're saved. They have to know. The Bible said we believe in our heart unto righteousness. We profess our mouth unto salvation. We don't know it when we tell it. Amen. And you need to wait on it. Oh, King Agrippa got us. Oh, and listen. And old Felix even said, oh, Paul, wait a minute. Much learning has made thee mad. Well, you done got beside. They think a lot of us preachers are mad uh, because we get beside ourselves and the Spirit of God moves. Uh, I'm telling you, my friend, he said, oh, noble Felix, I'm not mad. 
I'm telling you, and I'm not mad here. I'm telling you, Jesus saves. He really does. And, and almost is lost. I want you to know if you want to be saved, if you'll go all the way with the Lord, the Lord will go all the way with you. If you'll act and listen. Another thing we get away from, we think, oh, my friends, there's no repentance. Yes, they are repentance. you got to come with a broken heart and a contrite spirit and be sorrowful with you and want the Lord to come in your life and you see if he don't make a difference. Oh, Paul got to a place, my friends, and the Lord was able to save him and he'll do the same for you. Brother Stan, come on a song. But sadly, King Agrippa looked at Paul and said, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Almost will not get you to heaven, friend. I want you to know that. And the Lord wants you to go to heaven. He wants each and every one of us to realize that he that paid the price. And he wants us to come. And if you're here, if you realize that Jesus saves and you want him to come into your life, you'll come and ask him this morning. Oh, I'm telling you, with all the compassion, everything in you, if you'll humble your heart and say, Lord, here I am. I promise you, he'll make a change in you. And he wants to make a change. He wanted to make a change in King Agrippa. But he said, almost. I pray that you'll not think almost will get you to heaven. It will not. But you need to come all together. While we stand, church, pray. What you know? Almost is still lost, friend. How about it? How about it? God knows your heart.
and sustain this worship and ordinance and discipline and doctrine to contribute cheerfully and regularly to support of the ministry and expense of the church, the relief of the poor, and spread the gospel through all nations. So, are you doing it? We also engage in family, maintain family and secret devotion to religiously educate our children and seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintance to walk circumspectly in the world. Be just in our different our dealings, faithful in our engagement, and separate in our deport. To avoid all tattling, backbiting, and excessive of anger, to abstain from the sale and use of destructive drugs and intoxicated drinks as a beverage and the sun for family. We all, we, we all also pursue fertility and marriage and sustain from the moral practice and recognize the marriage and the covenant as always submitted to the authority of the scripture as a final evidence of all issues. Moreover, we will be zealous in our effort to advance the kingdom of our Savior, we will further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember one another prior to aid one another in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy and feelings and courtesy and, and speech, be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rules of our Savior to secure it without delay. We will moreover engage and we will remove from this place. We will as soon as possible get out with some other church where we can carry out the spirit and covenant and principle of God's word. Uh, that is a covenant that we made with one another. Uh, that we're going to do that together as a body in Christ. Uh, if you're a member of this church or a Baptist church, you promise that covenant to God. Where are you? My friends, I ask you, uh, and I ask you to search your heart. One verse, brother, stand and the doors of Young Green Baptist Church will be open.
feel love.